<laughs> hey, Ronnie, do you, do you remember the experiment with the thing that was called the gizmo? Yeah, it was a high, some high frequency sound generator or something. This was yeah. just um, the sound of a packing cry, full cry. Ah, uh, no, that's a different one. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it was broadcast out towards where the hunt was in order, again, because the foxhounds are pack animals, they would be drawn to that sound. Yes. Yeah, and and again, it means that they're being pulled away from actually hunting. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of the hunt hunters were, were were really experts at blowing the hunting horn. Yeah, that's right. And they were able to attract the dogs using that and draw them off the scent. You know, there's all these different methods we we used, and, and I think still are. So, Andy, you you like this? This is uh, chapter seven of a book called Fettered Kingdoms by John Bryant. John Bryant, yeah, came out in eighty two. Right, excellent book that everyone should try and read. Chapter seven is called Hunting and Shooting. Get, get this, the beginning of the chapter, it goes, when I began writing this book, I had not intended to grant the killing of our fellow animals for sport, anything but a cursory mention. After all, the purpose of the book is to explain the difference between animal welfare philosophy and that of animal rights, and thereby perhaps help some welfareists move a little more quickly towards the path of rights. The path which took me almost a decade to trace through the undergrowth of traditional thinking. That's interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Um, I mean, I know John. I mean, John's been dead perhaps three or four years now. I, I didn't always see eye to eye with John. But ne nevertheless, you know, he's, he's somebody that I kind of greatly respected, you know, for his lifetimes of dedication towards like, protecting other animals. When I was involved with the, the Band of Mercy, which was what the Animal Liberation Front was known as before it became the Animal Liberation Front. We we rescued some guinea pigs from a, a place that was was breeding them for animal animal experiments. It was John that took them in. John, um, we weren't uh, we weren't planning to rescue the guinea pigs. We were planning to damage the vehicle, um, the delivery van at this place, but it wasn't there when we got there. So we we got in the place and, and just rescued these guinea pigs. But John didn't live too far away from where it was, and we got in touch with John and he took, he took the guinea pigs on. I can talk about now that it, it is, John's no, no longer with us. Uh, he was also involved, there is a guy, because he's, he's still with us, Mike Huskerson, very much involved in the hunt saboteurs. He did a lot of undercover work, a lot of undercover investigations into, into hunting. And Mike was involved in the rescue of a beagle from the ICI laboratory where they were forcing these dogs to inhale tobacco smoke. It was smoking, known as smoking beagles just the effect on their lungs of, of cigarette smoke, which surely we knew about anyway without doing that, but there we go. Mike was charged with, with theft of the beagle and, and John was charged with receiving stolen property, in other words, because he, he helped look after this, the dog that was rescued. But I think the charges would, would drop. John wasn't averse to becoming involved in kind of the more... Yeah, but it also thing. highlights a fundamental problem, which is that uh, our fellow animals are regarded as items of property. Well, absolutely, because, yeah, because those charges are charges that relate to property and receiving stolen property. It's like a slave, isn't it? And it's, it's exactly the same slaves regarded as property. Yeah, they're regarded as chattel. Yeah, that's exactly, yes. And, and this is a fundamental, you know, this is a fundamental wrong. Other animals are not, uh, are not the property of humans. They are persons, actually, in their own right. 